Hi guys, today I'll show you how to create a date table, hierarchy, key performance indicators, and this mini dashboard. These KPIs are visual measures of performance and can be used to track performance against set objectives, just like actual to target sales in this dashboard. All of this can be done in Excel 2013 and later versions. I used Microsoft 365 for this. Now, if you are yet to subscribe, please support this channel by clicking the subscribe button and don't forget to leave a comment or feedback after watching. Thank you. In the previous video, we imported data from the Power Query editor window. Now let's get the data from Excel. Go to the data tab, click on get data from file and select from workbook. The Excel file is right here. Select and click import. There's only one worksheet in the file, so click to select the table. From the preview, you see that the file contains data relating to sales, reps, customers, and product. The data looks okay. Headers are in the right place, so we don't have to do any transformation. However, if you need to do a data cleanup, then you have to click transform data to take you to the Power Query editor window. So click the drop down next to load and select load to. Select only create connection and check this box to add the data to the data model. Click OK. The query is right here. You can double click to open it. Let's go to the data model. Since we're already in the data tab, click manage data model right here to launch the power pivot window. Let's create a measure for total sales. Click the cell in the calculation area and click auto sum. Edit the name and apply some formatting. The next step is to create a date table. You can also create a date table in Power Query. I'll discuss that in another video. A date table can be used to create relationships between tables or group dates into time periods, like years, months, quarters, just like a regular pivot table. Go to the design tab, click on the drop down for date table and select new. Please note that if there is no date field in the data set, you won't be able to create a date table. A new table has been created and the date column contains a unique row for every date that is in the data set. The data set contains data for two years. So this table has 365 rows for each year. So this is a date dimension table. Having a date table allows you to create time intelligence formulas using DAX functions like month to date, year to date, and others. Please note that when the source data is updated with new information, you have to click update range here to refresh the date table. Let's change the format so it doesn't show the time. Select the column, go to the home tab, under formatting, change the date format. Take a look at the other columns. From the color of the header, and if you watched my video on calculated columns in Power Pivot, you'll notice that they are calculated columns. Power Pivot automatically created them using DAX functions. I'm going to edit the formula for month. The four M's here is for the full month names. I'll remove one M so we can get the short form. Enter. Cool. Now switch to diagram view to create a relationship between the date and sales table. Drag date to date. Take a look at the bottom of the date table. Power Pivot automatically created a date hierarchy. A hierarchy is a list of fields that appear as a single object in the pivot table fields list. It makes navigation easier in the field list. So this is the parent and any field you drag into it is the child. You can modify the name, drag fields to it, right click to reorder or remove the field. 
let's create one for customers in the sales table before we go and see how it looks in the pivot table. Click on this icon to create a hierarchy. Let's name this customer details. Hold control, select customer, product, and category. Right click and add to hierarchy. Good. Let's go and see how this looks in the pivot table. Click on insert pivot table in the ribbon. Place on an existing worksheet. The tables are here in the fields pane. Right click to move them to the active tab. The date and customer hierarchies are here. Now let's drag customer hierarchy to rows and sales to values. Let's go to the analyze tab. Now, if you've ever wondered what this drill up and drill down feature in the analyze tab is used for, this is it. When you have hierarchies, click on any item in the field and click drill down to get the details of the selected item. Drill down again to get the products bought by the customer and drill up to get the level above the item, customer or category. You can double click as well to get the same result. I'll uncheck customer details and add date hierarchy to rules. Let's see how this works in a pivot chart. Press Alt and F1 to insert a pivot chart. Turn off the grid lines and delete the title. Double click on the bar to get to the next level. Double click again, there, right click, drill up, and it's back to years. You can use the expand and collapse buttons as well. I discussed this in my video on pivot chat. The link is in the description box below. Now it's better to hide unnecessary fields if you are only going to use the hierarchy. So let's go back and hide some fields. I'll hide all the fields except year and month in the date table. I'll hide everything here except sales rep and the measure we created. This doesn't affect the functioning of the tables or hierarchies. Let's go back to the workbook. The fields are now hidden. Now uncheck date hierarchy and drag the month to rules and sales rep to filters. Now we can go to the Power Pivot tab to insert KPIs. Click on the drop down and select new KPI. The KPI window opens up. Please note that KPIs are based on a measure, so you can create a KPI if no measure has been created. Our goal here is to compare the actual sales by the sales rep to their monthly target. The base field is the sales measure. You define the target value as a measure or an absolute value. I'll use an absolute value in this example. The monthly target is 10,000. Press enter so the threshold will adjust accordingly. You can accept or edit the suggested thresholds. Let's make sales below 7,000 red. You can drag the icon or type it in. Between 7,000 and 9,099 should be yellow. Now this implies that 10,000 and above will be green. Select an icon style. I'll go with the default. Click OK. Back in the fields list, you see the KPI icon. The measure has been created and grouped. Take a look at the pivot table, it's showing ones. You have to uncheck status and check again to display the icons. Cool. I'll edit the name. Sort oldest to newest. Now we need two pivot tables, one for the chart 
and the other for the KPIs. So select the pivot table, copy and paste. I'll name the pivot tables in the Analyze tab. This will help us identify each table. This will be KPIs and this fact. Now add a slicer each for year and sales rep. Right click and add. Resize and adjust the column width. The slicers will help us filter the data. Change the color in the style gallery. Now we have to make sure the slicers are connected to the two pivot tables. So right click, select report connections, check this box and click OK. Let's see if it works. Cool. Let's edit the chart. Click on the pivot table. Go to the fields list. Uncheck status and check goal. Change the name to target and sales to actual. Right click on any button on the chart and hide all fields buttons. Click on the chart elements icon and place the legend at the bottom. Right click on the chart, select change series chart type, change targets with line chart, click OK. Now click on the bar, press Ctrl 1 to open the format pane and reduce the gap width. Go back to the chart, click on the line, go to fill and line and increase the width of the line. You can change the style if you want. Now we can add data labels. Click on the bar, check data labels and place inside. I'll change the font color to white. To make the chat title dynamic, we have to create a formula and I'll link it to this cell. So it will be equal to the rep ampersand to concatenate, open quotation mark, space, iPhone, actual versus target sales. So if I change this, it will update accordingly. Let's insert a shape for the chart title and link it to this cell. The chart is looking good. Now move the chart pivot table to another sheet. Select, cut, and paste. Change the font color to white so it's not visible. Go to the pivot table for the chart. Right click and remove the grand total. Uncheck sales rep in the fields list. And move the table up. I'll move the chart closer and delete the axis. We have labels now, so it's not necessary. Now go to the design tab and change the style to match the slicers. And we're all done. I hope you found this video useful. Please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Thank you.